Welcome to the Flourish Academy podcast. My name is Heather Lawton, and I'm joined by my good friend and co-host Mara Chick. We believe everyone can be successful in any endeavor they pursue, whether it's personal or professional. By constantly nourishing your mind, reading books, you can impart wisdom and tactics into your life and business. In this podcast, we will be discussing the books that have impacted us and share actionable strategies at the end of each episode to help you succeed. So sit back, relax run, whatever you're doing while listening to this podcast, because we're going to read so you don't have to. Today, we're continuing our discussion on Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. 21 great ways to stop procrastinating and get more done in less time. That sounds great, doesn't it? Get more done in less time. I love that. We should just call the book that instead of yeah. <laughs> Eat, Eat That, that frog. frog. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're moving into chapter five, which is entitled Practice Creative Procrastination. This is on page 33. But I do have something to say about procrastination because in this chapter, you're going to talk about how he says there are some things you should procrastinate Mm -hmm. on, right? Okay, so you know I'm a huge fan of the Navy SEALs, specifically Extreme Ownership and Jocko Willink. I love his podcast. I listen to it religiously. He's so hardcore. I love it. And he says, there is one thing you should procrastinate on. And when he said that, I was like, what in the world is Jocko going to say? Laziness. You should procrastinate on being lazy. Okay. And I laughed and then I understood it. What he says about working out, for instance, let's say you wake up and you don't feel like working out. Your body hurts or something's wrong. You procrastinate on putting that off, meaning just go do it. Put it, put, put that off, not doing it until tomorrow. It's almost like reverse procrastination. He's trying to play mind games with you. And I love it. I love it. So there are days when I don't feel like working out. I work out every single day and I wake up and I think to myself, am I just being lazy or does something really hurt? Or is there a legitimate reason that I shouldn't? Well, I'll procrastinate on being lazy. So I'll go down and I'll, you know what? I'll just do 10 minutes. I'll just do 10 minutes on the treadmill and see how it goes. And every single time I've done that, I've done the full 30, which is my goal, 30 minutes a day. And so I procrastinate on being lazy. Isn't that funny? (laughs) I can tell you love it. (laughs) No, I don't. If you're watching the video, you can see my face. But if you're listening, no. She's basically rolling her eyes at me on procrastinating on laziness. You know what I'm procrastinating on? uh, Heather wants to, one of our books that she wants us to review for the podcast is Extreme Ownership. And I'm procrastinating on letting her add that book. That's true. That's true. Okay, but dive into the book, chapter five. Chapter five. So straight from the book, I'm on page 30. Yours might be different. Mm -hmm. Uh, The fact is that you can't do everything that you have to do. You have to procrastinate on something. Thing. Therefore, deliberately and consciously procrastinate on small tasks. Um, since you must procrastinate anyway, decide today to procrastinate on low value activities. Decide to procrastinate on out on outsource, delegate, and eliminate those ta- acti- those activities that don't make much of a contribution to your life. In any case, so. We've been talking a lot about outsourcing and delegating. I mean, Heather has people that work with her and I have people that work with me and I have been delegating and outsourcing a lot of stuff lately. More and more than you ever have. More than I ever thought. Like, I'm just kind of like, okay, I can't do it all anymore. And if I try to do it all... You're going to die. No, I will die and nothing will get done. You will physically die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're right. And then nothing will my, get done. My mind explodes. Okay. This was a struggle for both of us, which was to letting go of control. Mm-hmm. All right. I have seen you in the past, maybe six months even, but I mean, you've been doing it for the past couple of years, but within the last six months, you've been outsourcing more and more. How is it going for you? It's going great. I, I love it. I mean, it's a struggle when you first start doing it. Cause you're like, well, they're not doing it as good as I would. What? Why aren't they doing it as fast as I would have done? Why? Like, so you have to kind of let go of that. But now that like all the training is done and it, once you get through the struggle of training and getting someone up to speed, like you have to trust that like these people know what they're doing and they're going to do what you need them to do. And I love it now because I'm just like, oh, I can give that to my assistant. Oh, I can give it's lovely now and because I have more time. And it's compounding. Yes. Don't you think it's compounding? You're mm-hmm. delegating more and more. You feel better. And she and my assistant even feels better because she's like, oh, Mara trusts me with more stuff. Like, So I feel like it's so worth it. 
to pu- to, to power p- through the training yes, portion. Yes, the training is hard. Right. And, you know, giving up control of things that, you know, you're used to having control over is really difficult, especially for someone who's a type A control Ooh, freak. That would be that's us. That's me. Yeah, that's both of us. <laughs> so, um, but it's great. How do you feel about... Uh, amazing. Amazing. I know. Uh, like, why didn't I do it sooner? Why did we resist? I think it's the training. It's, yeah. Because when you're in, in the training phase, you're thinking, I, if I could just do it and be done. Yeah, I could be done by now. Yeah. So the training phase, also, how am I going to pay them? Can I afford to pay them? What does that look yeah, like? Yeah, the money is always the a The money part. is definitely a thing, but it has freed us both up. We would not be able... We wouldn't to, be doing this no, podcast. No. Heck no. Not at all. There would be no way. Mm-mm. We hired a producer for our podcast, and she is amazing. We yes. would never be able to do this without her. So those were all really good decisions. I think number one, why didn't I do it sooner? And number two, what else can I yeah. outsource? What else? Can someone else write my notes on each book? No. <laughs> um, okay, so that just was, in the same chapter, yeah. uh, straight from the book, one of the most powerful of all words in time management is the word no. Say it politely, say it clearly, clearly so that there is no misunderstanding. Say it regularly as a normal part of your time management vocabulary. Okay, so you guys know Heather and I run a mastermind and we do monthly business challenges with our mastermind participants. And this month's challenge is uh, saying no. The power of the no. The power we call of it. no. Mm-hmm. And we have them um, trying to get no's because we are so fearful of this word no because we think it's a rejection and so we're trying to desensitize them but the flip side of that is us saying no to things that come our way that we know are not going to fit in with like what our goals are so one it's getting no's and one it's saying no the other side saying no so it's been going really well we've been getting a lot of great responses the our participants have been... They loved it. They're sharing all of the no's they're getting. Great. And then we went to a restaurant and we're like, okay, we got to get three no's from here. Like, go ask for queso for free. Free okay. queso. Mara loves cheese. I will eat cheese any which way you give it to me. And I will go ask for free queso. And you know what? More often than not, we're like, oh, here's free queso. And we got it. We got it. We got free queso. So we so, always say, what's the worst that can happen? If they say no, okay, you were expecting it. But what if they say yes? Mm. Then you just got something for free. Mm. So yeah, it's about desensitizing yes. yourself. It's not a bad word. Yeah. It can be a complete mm. sentence. No, that doesn't fit mm. in with my goals. I don't choose to do that right now. And you know, one of our um, mastermind participants shared that, you know, someone was contacting her for photos and they weren't, their schedules weren't connecting. And she just said, no, it's not like that's not when I'm open, you know? So it's, it's hard because you want to try to please everybody. And that's, I think, especially as women, we're like, oh, we have to please everybody. Oh, I don't want them to hate me if I say no. It's just a no. This is my schedule. And here it is. I do and, that. You, I know you've done that as well with mm-hmm, your shoots mm-hmm. where people have asked for special dispensation. And you listen, if you could do it, you would, but you can't. And the thing about saying no in those instances is think about this. Think about the consequences. If you say yes to a time that you don't want to shoot, you actually end up resenting the client and the shoot. It's Mm -hmm. bad. You cannot do it. Mm -hmm. But when you say no, you feel a little bit stronger, Mm -hmm. a little bit more proud, like I'm in control. What The world didn't come crashing down because you said no to one client. I mean, come on. If they can't kind of figure out a way to get into your schedule, then I don't think it's a client. Right. They can move. There are other people that they can use for whatever service they're looking for. Yeah. Procrastination. Oh, Lord. Okay. So why don't we move on to chapter eight? Can we do that? Eight? Can we skip to eight? Did you have anything from six and seven? I mean, they're Um, good, but... Let's see. The only thing I have is this... He calls it the great question, which is, what one skill, if I developed and did Mm. it in an excellent fashion, would have the greatest positive impact on my career? Um, This reminds me of the book, The One Thing. And I loved that book, Gary yes. Keller. And he says, what is the one thing that if I did would make all other things unnecessary or easier? And I will often ask myself this, what what could I develop? What do I need to develop? What don't I need to develop? What can I outsource? I can't think of a good example right now. Do you have anything like that? that you know, got- I think that question would have helped me a lot in my corporate days. Like, mm-hmm. what's what could I have done, you know? But I think when I think now as a business owner, eh, I mean, nothing jumps it's out. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Moving on to Ooh, chapter, chapter eight, eight, page 47. 
It's called Apply the Law of Three. And Theodore Roosevelt said, do what you can with what you have where you are. So the funny thing about that quote, I have it written on my board in my closet. I see this quote every day, although I have it attributed to George Washington Carver. So who knows if it was <laughs> great Carver or Roosevelt? I don't know. Okay. But And I tell the kids this too. Do what you can with what you have where you are. Mm-hmm. Don't give me excuses. You don't have the tools you need or you don't uh, the skills or whatever. Just do something. Do anything. Okay, continuing on. Um, chapter 8, page... 51. Oh, this is great. Okay. He has questions. So I'm going to pose these questions and I want you to either write them down or think about them. Number one, what are your three most important business or career goals right now? So we're going to go through different areas of your life and the, the question's going to be the same. So you would want to write this down and look at it. What are the your three most important business, or career goals right now. Just write those down. You have to get them written down to look at Mm -hmm. them, to see what they are. And then I'm going to give you the other areas of your life because obviously you are not one dimensional, are you? You are multifaceted like a diamond. I know I shine like a diamond too. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm worth as much as a diamond too. That's right. right. (laughs) Okay. So we have number one, business and career. Number two is family and relationships. Top three most important goals. Financial, health, personal and professional development or growth, social and community, and finally, number seven, biggest problems or concerns in your life right now. So what he's asking Mm. you to do is list your three most important goals in these areas. I'm just going to recap the areas, the seven areas. We have business or career, family or relationships, financial health, personal and professional, social and community, or biggest problems or concerns that you face right now. That's actually an important one. That last one Yeah, gets that's me. a good one. I write down every once in a while in my list, I write, what is pressing on you the most right now? Because there's always one big mm-hmm. thing. It's your frog, it turns out. But is there something about your business or your relationships that's really pressing on you? You know you need to address it, but maybe it's hard or it's big, so you don't. That's a good place to start. Ask yourself, what is pressing on me the most Mm -hmm. right now? Because until you get that figured out, everything else is just going to be a challenge. That's funny because we were talking this morning about my back issues. Like I've had back issues for about a year and a half. I've been in constant nerve pain and it's kind of resurfaced recently and so when you read question seven what are your three biggest problems or concerns in life right now and it just my number one problem is my back and like my physical health I just it's like yours are back back and back (laughs) there's my three three. (laughs) there's there's no other options (laughs) so because when you're in that physical pain especially with your back you can't do anything so then how how likely is it for you to be able to focus on say a big new marketing effort in your business almost impossible no because all I can feel is the pain yeah so you know that's then you know that like when, when you sit down and answer that, that number seven question, like those are things that need your focus because you have to fix those issues before you can focus and grow on other things. Anything. Because otherwise they're going to eat away at you until they're dealt with. And then by that time, when you, if you keep pushing them to the side and then you're like, okay, I'll deal with that now. Guess what? It's deeper than it was Like, you know, like six months ago, it gets worse. It's worse. And it's eating away at you. I mean, really, honestly, think about my back issues. Last year, if I would have maybe done something earlier, instead of putting my MRI off for six weeks, maybe I could have saved myself from surgery. Oh, gosh. But you know, like, that's a perfect example of like, how that's a big deal. Your concerns and problems can just eat away at you and make the issues worse by the time you want to face them. That is very, very well said. Dave Ramsey says you can pay now or you can pay later, but if you pay later, the price will always be higher. Okay. So that being said, when's your doctor's appointment? Um, I'm going to call after we're done okay. recording and get it moved up because three weeks is just a little too long to wait to go yeah. back to my doctor. And I'll be like, I re-herniated. He'll be yeah. like, oh, Mara, I have fibromyalgia. Right. Mara, you don't have fibromyalgia. 
It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and back to the book on page 54. He talks about balance. I have a funny story about this. I do some speaking for some small groups, and I was talking one time about balance, how important it is to have balance in your family, in your life, in your relationships, all these different areas. And then the speaker a little bit later... Um, she got up and she said, balance is a myth. It's terrible. Why would anybody ever talk about balance? And I was like, oh my gosh, I was going on and on about balance. But she had an excellent point. And he says this in the book. How often does a tightrope walker balance when on the wire? Well, it never. They're never balanced because they're always constantly adjusting and readjusting. Mm-hmm. So there's no such thing as balance. You cannot have your life in balance because guess what? If there's balance, there's no movement. And if there's no movement, there's no growth. Do not look to achieve balance. I had that all wrong. I didn't know it at the time, but more knowledge now has shown me that what you're looking for is harmony. And harmony mm. does not mean that everything is perfectly balanced. It just means because seasons are different. So you might have a season where you have small children and then all of your attention is on those small children, or they might be older and then you have attention to put back on your health or your business. So it's never that they're in balance. It's just that they're in harmony and you can manage them, but you have to constantly be readjusting to figure out where that is. So there's no such thing as balance, which is good news. <laughs> We're, so stop trying to achieve right? balance. We're looking for harmony. Harmony. Yes. That's a good point, Heather. Yeah, You're thank so you. smart. You are. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, chapter nine. I think you had one thing you wanted to touch on in chapter nine. I do. Okay, so he talks about on page 59, taking the first step. When you sit down with everything in front of you, you know, your lists and your goals and you're ready to go, the first thing you need to do is assume the body language of a high of high performance, sit up straight, sit forward, away from the back of the chair, carry yourself as though you were an efficient, effective, high performing personality. Then pick up the first item and say to yourself, let's get to work and plunge in. This relates back to a Mm. TED talk that's very popular. It's by Amy Cuddy and it's about Mm. the science, the neuroscience of posture and smiling. And you can definitely check that out. But essentially, oh, also Jordan Peterson, Dr. Peterson has a lot of talk about posture, that if you sit up straight with your shoulders back, you actually change the neurochemistry in your Mm -hmm. brain and you feel high performing, you feel better equipped. So you have your list in front of you. Some people tend to look at these lists and feel overwhelmed and they get dejected and their posture just collapses, Mm -hmm. which then their brain follows suit. Mm -hmm. So he say, and listen, okay, listen recognize that this sounds ridiculously simple so people won't do it because they'll think what's the big deal does it matter i am telling you it matters you sit up straight just do it for a couple of minutes it changes your brain chemistry and then you can get after it you know every time i go i think i gave this little like speech in t- in my self-love group about um like what to do if you're feeling down or something and i said you know do a power posture, like stand up, put your hands on your hips, like wonder woman, like you're standing there and you're going to conquer the world. Like, yay. Or like the runner's pose where you're like running through the finish line where your arms are just extended out. And it just changes the entire chemistry and like your brain wakes up. It's just all this blood's flowing. Like, and every time I feel nervous or I'm like anxious about something, I stand in my power pose and I'm like, I'm going to conquer the world today. Because it works. Yeah, it And does. the funny thing is, even if you're, even if you currently don't believe it, you're like, okay, no. You guys are hokey. Yeah, <laughs> right. Just try it. You know that runner's pose that you just spoke about when yeah. um, somebody crosses the line and they win, the victorious, mm-hmm. so they put their arms up like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they did a study on that and they found that even blind people who had never seen a race, had never had sight in their entire lives, would do that as they were crossing the finish line. So they were studying that, what that does to the brain and what oh. that, yeah, it's like victorious. You put your arms up. Isn't, wasn't that so interesting? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, and also he says, I love this part, he's talking about your environment. So, okay, watch your posture Mm -hmm. and also watch your environment. Back to the book, he says, take a good look at your desk, your office, both at home and work. Ask yourself, what kind of person works in an environment like this? The cleaner and neater Mm. your work environment, the more positive, productive, and confident you feel. Resolve today to clean up your desk and your office completely so that you feel effective, 
efficient, and ready to get going the next time you sit down to work. I love this. And yeah. if I let my office get away from me, I will look at it and out loud I will say, what kind of person would work here? A loser. That's who. <laughs> Clean up your stuff. You are not a loser. <laughs> You're not a loser. <laughs> and I do, I also, I also employ this with my children. Mm-hmm. What kind of person lives in squalor like this? I need to employ that with my husband. There you go. <laughs> Ask him. What he kind would of- say, me. <laughs> That's who. That's who lives here. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Me? Me? Yeah. My kids don't really care. Um, okay. One thing, touching on chapter 10 for you, Heather. Yes. Is it 10? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chapter 10. Um, he talks about changing your... I have written in here, a 1% degree change can start the momentum. So if you're feeling mm. overwhelmed and you have a lot to do, just change something small. That is to say, don't look at that giant list and think you're going to tackle it all because you will feel overwhelmed. Just do one tiny thing. Why don't you create a separate list that has like three things on it and check, check, check. That makes you feel better. One small thing. That was all I had from chapter 10. Okay. Chapter 11, upgrade your key skills. So um, he talks about never stop learning. So um, from the book, One piece of information or one additional skill can make an enormous difference in your ability to do the job well. Identify the most important things you do and then make a plan to continually upgrade your skill in those areas. And then he has a rule. Continuous learning is the minimum requirement for success in any field. And then he says, everything is learnable. That's my favorite. I have that like bolded outline. Yes, it's like, yes, everything is learnable. And you don't know it all. We just always think like, oh, okay. I, You know, I never say like, okay, I'm the best photographer. I'm the best. No, I'm always wanting to learn more. I'm always studying, doing something constantly feeding my mind, like becoming a self-love life coach, becoming a body positive activist, like going through all these trainings. Like I am focused on making myself better and never sitting back and saying, yep, I'm done. I Good learned here. everything. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> We're all set. Success is just going to come to me now. <laughs> all clear. <laughs> Ain't happening here. <laughs> right. So I can't, I don't think that you can ever sit back and say like, yep, I'm done. I never. learned it all because... I still, I take piano lessons to learn something new or... You love to learn. I just, it's fun. It keeps my brain going too because I don't want to get old. No, uh, it's so important to have Mm -hmm. a mission, to have something that you focus on, something you're learning. Mm -hmm. As long as I've known you, you've been fantastic at that. You're always learning something. I love that because you make yourself better so that you can have more of an impact on your audience Mm. too. Because you're thinking, I know a lot of the things that you learn and you get trained for to be qualified is to help others. Mm -hmm. So, and you get the benefit, the bonus is that you get the benefit Mm -hmm. of it, but that's really not even your goal. It's not my goal. Mm -hmm. No, I'm always figuring out how I can help others. Right. Um, So Brian puts in here just quickly, like three um, steps to mastery. First is read in your field for at least one hour every day, which well, I read more than that. But right. okay, thanks, Brian, for your advice there. <laughs> second, <laughs> second, take every course or seminar available on the key skills that can help you. And third, listen to audio programs in your car. Fantastic. Did he say anything in there about listening to the Flourish Academy podcast? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I see it right here. <laughs> this book he wrote two years ago when this wasn't even a glint in our eye. The Flourish Academy podcast is your number one choice for all. That's yes, great. So you? I recently drove to Louisville by myself. Louisville, Kentucky from Pittsburgh is about five and a half hours. And I always say I go to the Automobile University. <laughs> You have all of that time to learn. It's fantastic. So every minute in your car, you could put something on that's edifying and learn. I love that. Podcasts are great, free, like learning. I mean, why not? Why are we not listening to more podcasts? I mean, I have podcasts I need to just sit down and like listen to. Maybe I should go drive to Louisville or something. You know, I actually look forward to long road trips for that reason or flights because I can just put them on and listen and take notes. I love it. I'm thinking about going to Nashville next year for like a week to do boudoir sessions there. And I'm like, I want to drive so that I can like just listen in the car and have some like peace and quiet. Mm, I love it. And no interruptions and just listen. Great. All right, Heather, as we wrap up today's episode, can you tell everyone how they can support our podcast? For sure. First, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, check out Mara's show notes at flourish.academy. That's our website. She does a great job of putting these notes together so you can review them. If you would prefer to watch this on video, you can do so at flourishacademy.com. 
TV. And if you're getting something from this podcast, first of all, awesome. That's what we're about. Mm-hmm. Why don't you share it with your friends and help them? Yeah. I mean, everyone needs a little that would, support and yeah, love. That would impact them and it would help us reach more people. If you want to purchase this book or any book that we discuss, I have an Amazon affiliate link in the show notes that if you use just helps offset a little bit of the cost. We would appreciate it. Oh, did I say make sure you leave a review? Reviews help. Yeah, they really do help us. Please Plus, do. Just keep checking in if I'm taking showers every day. No, just <laughs> So kidding. we have that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. We'll catch you next time.